captained by the Middle East Provisional Boxing Commission, Commissioner Jose Mohan. Also sanctioned by the WBC, President Mauricio Suleiman. Supervisor in attendance, Kevin New. At ringside, the timekeeper is Adam Janav. Also at ringside, the three judges scoring this bout will be Shasa Janav, Gary Kitanowski, and Mike Hale. And in the ring, the man laying the lock when the bell sounds, veteran referee of over 100 title fights, Kenny Payless. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, she's wearing the silver and black trim trunks. She went in officially at an even 129 pounds. Her professional record, 15 victories. No defeats, three of her victories coming by way of KO. Fighting out of Paris, France, presenting the current EBU European and former WBC interim super featherweight champion of the world, the Diamond, Elham Her opponent fighting out of the blue corner. She's wearing the multicolored trunks. She went in officially at 128 and one quarter pounds. Her professional record, 46 victories, three defeats, 19 of her victories coming by way of KO. Fighting out of West Vander in Belgium, presenting the former WBC lightweight Champion of the world, Delphi Pursuit. Here we go, Fadi. We've got the fighters all announced, ready Ultimate to rock and roll. Kenny Bayless for instructions. We've got the infamous Kenny Bayless all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada. World-renowned referee. Very familiar to boxing fans around the world. Here we've got... Uh, the fighters coming up. This is always very telling of the story of the fighters. Yep. Chunks are good on this side, ladies. We I gotta keep it real with you, Amir. I mean, uh, I'm in a state of euphoria, like usually when there are events of this kind in the Middle East, like we've seen a lot of events take place uh, in the last few years uh, in Saudi Arabia and in the UAE. Uh, events of a, like, of a worldwide level. Sure. Like, uh, yeah, so, so th this is a good move for boxing in the Middle East and uh, it makes me really happy. And I'm very honored to be here commentating this historical event next to you and I hope this fight is going to be um, as exciting as the first fight. I appreciate that Fadi, the honor is mine and of course Fadi a part of some of the biggest fights in the Middle East that both Joshua fights, well the fight Joshua fight hopefully that they're working on yeah. as well as Joshua Ruiz. And here we go opening round, Delphine coming out out of the blue corner and Elham Mahadid out of the red corner. Just kind of sizing each other out for oh, the feet stepping right to her. Typically in the first round, it's a feeling out phase, but these girls are not feeling each other out for this round. They're stepping right to each other, exchanging some pretty decent blows. At this stage, it's going to be who's going to gain whose respect. Is it going to be speed? Is it going to be power? Who's going to control the ring? We call ring generalship. Is Al Khadam looking for the overhand right? Wasn't quite there. All right, work out. Work out, work out. We'll work in the corner there. Nothing really too clean landed. Again, both girls at this stage really just feeling each other out, trying to see, check each other's rhythm. And with the two minute round, it's a little bit. Oh, big left hook for Delphine. Mahadid kind of just shook that off, gained her control and composure right back in the center of the ring. And here comes Delphine Pearson. Uh, the ropes and the ropes took full advantage of that. 
that, and again, they regroup in the center of the ring. Boy, this fight, I think they can have this fight in a telephone booth, Fadi. Yeah. They're going right to each other. They are not taking their time boxing. They're stepping each other. It's already an exciting fight. I mean, I think, I think, uh, I'm so, so, I'm so. earlier, the Serrano versus Taylor fight inspired, I think, uh, the upcoming female fights. Um, uh, that, that fight actually reminded me of uh, Hagler versus R Leonard, you know, like, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, ha Hagler versus uh, Tommy Hearns, yeah, sure. the, that first round. I think that set the stage. I, I totally agree with you. I set the stage, I think, for women's boxing. What? And, uh, and Delphine Persoon and Ilham Makhalad are not disappointing in this first round. Time! Pretty even round. Makhalad goes back to her corner. Pretty confident. Tough round to call, Fadi. Yeah, it is, and uh, that's the problem with the two minutes round. Uh, I mean, like, uh, they're kind of hard to score. They're always uh, very competitive, very close, so. We're sitting here also ringside with the infamous Chris Fade, uh, who is going to be going into the audience, interviewing some of the several celebrities in attendance here today at Ittihad Arena, and we have got a packed house. Chris, great to be with you here ringside. I mean, great to be here as well. Uh, what, a, what an awesome night here for the capital, the UAE, Abu Dhabi. Uh, yeah, you talk about influences and celebrities. We have many of them in the crowd right now. We're walking out with the action we've already had inside this ring. Unbelievable. Set, setting the pace for UAE boxing. Close first round, second round, here we go. Delphine Persoon and Ilham Makhalid. Bucket. Thank you, Abdul Hafid. Get the bucket. Here we go. Nice. Kenny Bale's clear in the corner, and here we go. Round two. If you look, if you notice, uh, uh, Fadi and, and Chris, and Ham came out and she stepped over that center part of the, the center of the ring just to kind of let Delphine know, I'm stepping into your territory. Even though, you know, they both have respective areas uh, uh, in their corners where they first come out, you know, it's a little bit of a, a psychological warfare when she steps right to her, letting her know, listen, I'm not afraid of you. I've seen what you've done. I've seen your, uh, all your accolades. Oh, what a beautiful counter left hook. By Ilham Makhadid. Up, up, bring him up. Oh, he's got her hands full with this uh, uh, Ilham Makhadid. Up, up, bring him up. Who relatively with him has not fought any big fights, but she's making a name for herself tonight. Absolutely, and of course, the importance of this fight that the winner of this fight will be the mandatory challenger for Alicia Baumgartner, uh, which is the WBC champion. Work out the hole. Pursuing getting the better of that exchange there in the center. And this is for the WBC silver title. Yeah. Work out, work out. Looking for that big overhand right. Is it Ham Makhadad? Persoon digging to the body and just missing with that left hook. Ooh, big overhand hand. That's the shot she was looking for. That is the shot she was looking for. She's landed another one. That's the shot she landed. shots but Delphine is still stepping in it's, oh, wow, wow. it's interesting how Delphine switches her stance in the middle of her punches and she's comfortable switching into a southpaw stance in the middle of an exchange don't push don't push that comes from experience I mean she got over almost 50 fights this is her 50th fight wow so Time. Six and three in Delphine Persoon. What a second round. Chris, what do you think? I couldn't agree with you more, Chris. And talking about the event, the original event is supposed to be on the helipad, of course, with the passing of 
Uh, His Highness Sheikh um, uh, Sheikh uh, Khalifa. Uh, the event had to be postponed. In, a, in the Middle East, there is a period of mourning for three days, uh, with also a 40-day mourning period, with three days out of respect to the royal family. Nothing happened. So the event was postponed. And then the unfortunate sequence of a sandstorm uh, coming in the weekend that it was supposed to be postponed for. Uh, and that took us, Abu Dhabi stepped up, ITP Live and Ahmed Bashur stepped in and said, listen, we're going to help you guys put on this amazing event. And here we are. I mean, we stood on that helipad and it was scary without a sandstorm. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, round three. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Fadi, I love watching how Ilham steps right to Delphine in the beginning of each round. Because they're standing and still going right back to work. And they go right back to the center of the ring they go. Now, uh, Mikhalid, uh, and Ham, the diamond Mikhalid, six, 15 wins, zero losses. This is her 16th pro fight. European featherweight champion since 2018, and she did hold the WBC interim super featherweight title in 2019. Only three of her wins are by way of knockout. Which means she has no problem going the distance. And again, Delphine switching stances. Back, she's got Makhada up against the ropes. Delphine Pursun, Ilham Mikhail. Let's see if Ilham steps back out after, you know, probably the toughest round that she had, and she sure does. She's starting to circle a little bit more now. She's looking for that overhand right. Pursun with a big overhand right of her own, able to stick, step back, and Mikhail just missed with that overhand right. Has a good right hand by Delphine Pursun. And again, back to that southpaw stance. Very unorthodox way to throw punches. Great body shot. Stop, stop, stop. Fatty, there's a lot of great boxing happening in the region. Work out, work out, work out. Uh, taking place in Jeddah, uh, in Saudi Arabia, and then after that it was followed by Amir Khan uh, versus Billy Dip. And of course in 2019, before the pandemic, there was the uh, rematch of... Oh, 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 she clipped her face, and she clipped her whilst... 
and Mechanic's Corner is furious. Wow. She stepped away. Protect yourself at all times. That is time. the name of the Stop. game. I don't know what time. happened there. Yeah, the Kenny mouthpiece. The mouthpiece, the mouthpiece came out, and yeah. Mechanic just insinuated. She thought that she could have just turned around. You got to protect yourself at all times, and Delphine and then took Chilabit. full no, so advantage no of that, okay. as Chilabit she should have, until Kenny no, Bayless stopped the fight. No instructions. You got to keep going. Now, if you look time at in. Delphine Pursuit, it looks like she's got a cut over her right over her right eye. That just happened. Oh, big right hand by Mechanic. And Pursuit is just standing right in that pocket again, switching to that southpaw stance, and she is banging with her. Wow, what a turn of events. Yeah, and that, she was going to come for an easy fight. She's obviously not having that tonight. You are kidding, Chris. Boy, she has her hands full tonight. And sometimes you just don't know what to expect against, you know, these young up-and-comers. Oh, good right hand. But she's finding out quickly that al Khan is not here to lay down. She's coming to fight. Time! Wow, what a round. What a round. Round four of Rock'em, Sock'em, back and forth. Two minutes of continuous action between Delphine Pursuit and al Khan. Fatty, going back to what you were talking about in the region, of course, there's a lot of action. In Dubai, there's a ton of boxing that's going on. Yeah. In Abu Dhabi, there's going to be talks of big boxing coming. Uh, I know that with Badu Jack Promotions, there's going there's talks of a lot of big events coming, some hybrid events, some big time names coming in. Yeah, when I asked uh, Badu oh, Jack during the press conference yesterday, during sorry, the weigh-in event, mm -hmm. I asked him about uh, the efforts that he was Jack promotion and he told me he's looking forward to um, to have events and to fight in the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all around the region. Let's go. And you gotta give it to uh, the local scene as well, like sure. uh, Saudi in Saudi Arabia and UAE. I mean, there are uh, there are gyms like Round Ten Boxing Club creating creating boxers, pro boxers. EMD putting fight nights every month. Here we are, round five. Chris, how do you have the fight so far? Mate, I can't call this one. I'll leave that to you, the experts. But all I can tell you that there's a, there's a lot of action here tonight. There sure is. I mean, it's a pick 'em fight. It is very even. Now we're going to have to see how Delphine Pursuit deals with that cut over the right eye. It seems like it's on the outside, so it's not dripping. It's, it's not dripping into her eye. It's not dripping into her eye. It seems like it's coming right on the outside. And her corner seems to have done a nice job stopping that cut. But here comes Delphine. Well, if it does bother her, you're not going to be able to tell because she is just moving forward and walking and having to cut it down. Don't hold, don't hold. Good exchange there. Makata takes over the center spot, turns Delphine. Great left hand from the southpaw stance from Delphine Pursun. A ton of experience. As you said, Khaled, this is Fadi, sorry, this is Pursun's 50th fight. 46 and 3. She has definitely got experience on her side, but I'll tell you what. And she got a great chin too. She sure does. Originally from Belgium, living and residing in Belgium. Work out, work out. This fight I'm is stopped. close. This fight is dead even. The WBC having live scoring. I will tell you that after three rounds, the judges have this fight dead even. Of course, the WBC having open scoring, which I uh, tremendously commend Mauricio Suleiman, the son of the late Jose Suleiman, who started the World Boxing Council. Don't push, don't push. The biggest, if not the biggest, sanctioning body in boxing. By the way, Time. not to take away from this fight. What a finish. Wow, what a finish. So after the third round, after the fourth round, sorry, the judges have it dead even. 39-37 for Mikhadid. 39-37 for Pursun, and Judge B having it 38-38. Okay, well, I mean, it's yeah. dead locked. It's dead locked. You it wanted a, it's a highly competitive fight. I was going to say, you wanted a close here in number one, but we've brought it. You were talking earlier on, I was at that Amir Khan fight in Saudi Arabia. Billy Dibs 
actually my cousin from Sydney. Oh, uh, really? Now, let me talk to you. Billy did your cousin? That's my cousin from so Sydney. So he got the looks in the family. That's right. That's, that's my true. boy. That's true. That's true. Marshall, that's my me, boy, Billy Dibb. Let me tell you, Billy Dibb. Yeah. They want to come out here to the Middle East. I get calls from oh, Billy yeah. saying, let's get some more fights outside this way. Let yeah, me tell you something, Chris. Every time Five New Jack Promotions has an event anywhere, Billy Dibb is the first person in my text messages. Brother, get me a fight. I got one more run at this thing. Billy Dibb, big love shout out to you. Wallah, mashallah, he's a legend. Here we go. Round six action from Al Ittihad Arena in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. And what an event we have here. Promoted to you by Front Row and ITP Live, ITP Media. What a wonderful event that we have. A packed crowd here in the Al Ittihad Arena. And wow, I mean, they just got this venue secured three days ago. It's how we do it in Abu Dhabi. Don't forget, this is what summer in Abu Dhabi feels like. Wow. What a fight. I mean, it is back and forth. As soon as you finish commentating Watch your or hands. exchange, Watch your the hands, other fighter comes forward. But what a tremendous, tremendous fight by Delphine Persoon and Ilham Mikhalid here in Abu Dhabi at Tihad Arena. And they're leaving it all in the ring. Yeah, both fighters ain't utilizing the jab. Like, they're going at it. Like, I don't think they've thrown two jabs each. This is a straight dog fight. Yep. They are still standing right in the middle of the ring. This is the second half of the fight. And this is really where you're going to see what champions are made of. How would they be feeling round six right now, halfway through? Look out, look out. Fatigue stage right here. You, uh, you know, the thing is, Chris, is... The adrenaline that, that goes through your body, you know, when you hear the crowd, when you feel the punches, when you miss the punches, when you land a shot, a lot of that adrenaline takes the energy from you. So somebody's experience as Delphine has dealt with that, especially being on the big stage in Madison Square Garden, coming back in the UK, those two mega fights against Katie Taylor. So to answer your question, you know, it depends on the experience. But typically in the fifth round is when you go into that, you start tapping into that second chance tank. She's showing tremendous heart. But again, the experience of Delphine is now where she's starting to pick up the pace. Time! Round and a huge exchange at the end. Great round for Delphine for two. You can see both fighters taking deep breaths right now as we get into round number seven live, the Abu Dhabi Unity Boxing Events. What an event, what an event. And this is, of course, the uh, Abu Dhabi Summer Like You Mean It campaign. So great to be here in Abu Dhabi. My first time in Ittihad Arena. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Welcome to Yasser, boys. Beautiful. There's a lot to do here. Right? We've got all the biggest theme parks in the world. Come down, hang out. You'll need more than a few days. Don't forget, still to come, the main event, Floyd Mayweather, dangerous Don Moore, and then just before that as well, Anderson Silva. Can't wait to see him. Now, Bruno Machado, who he's fighting as well, actually resides right here in the camp. Oh, no kidding. So he's been here for the last 10 years, and he's one of the biggest fighters in the region when it comes to MMA as well. He, he dominates here, so that's going to be exciting to see as well. Bruno Gaviera Mahado Machado. Here we go. And we are now into round seven, second half of the fight. Delphine screaming out to her fans in attendance. <laughs> She's that comfortable. Good left hook coming out the gate, seeing what her chances are. Machada having some answers for that, and Machada coming back with a left hook right hand, and it landed. They're still fresh. They're still throwing crisp, sharp, heavy punches, and Machada just landed a great left hook right in that last exchange. Good slip inside. She's still very much in the fight. Very much so. I love how Machada just slip inside to side. She's countering from the inside. She's countering from the outside. You can't see where her counters are coming from. Sometimes it's a left hook when she dips inside. Sometimes it's a right hand on the outside. Oh, there's one right down the pipe. Amazing. She keeps switching that look. And when doing that, it's difficult for Delphine to see where that counter is coming from. There's another switch to southpaw by Delphine. Oh, good left hook by Mikhailid and Delphine countering down the pipe. Well, I would love to see these punch stat numbers. Look at this fight. Take it in a phone booth. They are toe to toe. Good right hand there by Delphine. 
But you know, we were talking earlier, Fadi. Clarissa Shield asking for the three minute round, saying, You want to see more knockouts in the female division, in the women's divisions, the women's fights, make the rounds three rounds. And you know, I think she's got a great point. Absolutely. And I don't think it's only about the knockout. I mean, when it's a two minute fight. Each fighter can dominate a minute and there is no differentiator there. Like the third minute can actually uh, be the differentiator for the judges to score. Agreed, agreed. Hopefully that gets looked at there and and, and the uh, women's boxing starts ah, no push. great fights. We've got great fighters in fighting today in boxing, of course. It all started, if you remember, with the coal mine. What a fight, what an end. What an end. Seven. The, the, non-stop. Absolutely non-stop. It is non-stop. This is a great fight. What an entertaining fight. Badu Jack came out here, iced up this guy, touched up Hany Atiyo, 45 seconds, did what he had to do. Eight world champions back to back to back. Badu Jack has fought, aiming for his third world title. So he fought a guy, a journeyman, like Hany Atiyo, and he did exactly what he had to do and get him out of there in the first round. And on the bigger and better thing. Going back to women's boxing, if you remember the coal miner's daughter, Christy Martin, she was the yeah. first woman boxer. Remember, she was fighting on the Mike Tyson card. card. Yeah, exactly. Followed by Lucia Riker, then Layla Ali, and now we have the era of, uh, of Clarissa Shields. We have Katie Taylor. We have the likes of Delphine Pursuin. Yeah. And there is the, uh, the WBC and IBF uh, champion for the super featherweight, which is. Uh, the winner of this fight will be the mandatory challenger for, which is Alicia uh, Baumgartner. Round eight action. I am here ringside with Fadi from Boxing Arabia. If you haven't, if you don't follow him already, by all means, it is the biggest social media boxing account in the Arab world, Boxing Arabia. So make sure you got to go give a follow. Look at this fight, Fadi. I, I mean, I'm at a loss for words. I'm just in awe. I'm a spectator at this fight. It's Absolutely. difficult for me to commentate this fight because I'm enjoying it so much. You can hear the corners shouting out their instructions from both ends. Great body shot. Oh, that Way to get it. Yeah. Delphine digging with the right hand and dipping over to the left, trying to bury that there. You know, those body shots would have been a good idea in the first couple of rounds to try to slow this pace down. Watch your hands. But now, apart from the cut on the right eye of Delphine, you can see bruises on the left eye. And that's from those big counters. And like I was saying earlier, uh, Fadi, those counters come from the right, they come from the left. She slips inside, she dips outside, and she has no problem changing that look. There she is, changing her levels up, down, around the sides. She does a phenomenal job with that. Drawing pursuit in for that right hand over the top. Let's have a good double left hook there by Han Mahadad. Yeah, let's not forget she's undefeated till now. She's not trying to take her first loss tonight. Man. I'll tell you that. Oh, that was a big good inside right hook. Lead right hook. We say lead right hook even though she's right handed. But she switches stance so often. And here comes Mahadad. standing room only. I can't believe how many people are here tonight. This fight was literally put together in 72 hours, and this is a standing room only event. As Chris was saying before, we've got two mega fights coming up. The MMA legend, UFC royalty in the house, Anderson the Spider Silva, taking on local uh, legend Bruno Machado an MMA legend in his own right, and then the main event in Floyd Mayweather, arguably the best fighter to ever lace up gloves. TBE, TBE, the best ever. He'll be taking on dangerous, undefeated, dangerous Don Moore. And here we go. 
Again, Mikhailic stepping right to Delphine. Delphine double jab, getting her off her, having her step back, and here comes Delphine. Round nine action. Delphine looking for that overhand right. So basically, we are in the championship rounds now because this is a oh, wow. absolutely fabulous. Yeah, we are in the ninth round, and this fight is scheduled for ten rounds. We've got four minutes left of action, and I'll tell you, this can go either way. It's a pick 'em. Who's going to have the belt at the end of this, boys? Who do you think? I'll tell you, I think the last round, the last two rounds, Delphine really started picking up the pace. And I think that's her experience that she's able to dig into that gas tank and, uh, you know, that second wind, turn it up a little bit. But I'll tell you, Makata is not backing down by any means. That was a beautiful left hook. And for Makata, this will be a great experience. No, I, 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 I'm stopped. With such an opponent. Absolutely. But I'll tell you what, she's not trying to come here to participate. She's here to win. Good inside work, stepping over to the side. Delphine, again, very unorthodox, very awkward style. She switches, steps over, switches stances. One, two down the pipe there. Makhadev switching levels and the good counter left hook. And she walked her right into that. When you clip, when you clip somebody with a flush left hook and they just keep punching at you, that, that tells you that they're not here to lay down. You're in a dog fight. She's got a great chin. Absolutely she does. We always say in boxing, your chin bone's connected to your heart bone. Once you get hit, that'll let you know what's inside of your heart. And both of these ladies are really showing tremendous heart. What a fight. Good counter, right hook. By Makata, and she comes back to her corner again. Confident that she won that round. But I'll tell you what, after eight rounds, the water, WBC water. open scoring. After eight rounds, the first judge has it 77 76 for Pursuit. The second judge has it 78 74 for Pursuit. And the third judge has it 75 77 for Pursuit. She has now, as I anticipated, picked up the pace and is winning on all the judges' scorecards. Does that mean she'll need a knockout if anything in the round? Is this in final? On two of the judges' oh, scorecards, well. she will need a knockout. On the first judge's 76-77, she could tie it up. But you, you're looking at, you will need a big, big finish here by Mekhadad, by Ilham Mekhadad. She will need a big, big finish. announcers in boxing today and I have the pleasure of calling him a friend what an amazing job he's had what an amazing career he's had and here we are in the championship round Fadi and Chris it's close Delphine definitely picked it up here in the second half of the fight mechad has got to be feeling the pressure and it looks like she is as she is pushing the pace I mean, before the fight, you said to me you believe this was going to go 10 rounds and you were spot on. Yep. Both fighters showing tremendous, tremendous courage here. Oh, good counter on the inside by Delphine. But Mikhail again, standing in the pocket with her. This young lady has tremendous heart. Tremendous heart. Absolutely. Wow. What a performance. What a performance by Ilham Mikhailad from France. And just a terrific, terrific fight. Sarah Voss sitting ringside who helped put this fight together. Big accolades out to Sarah. And of course, the entire front row team in Kian Ennis, Brent Johnson. A wonderful event here in Abu Dhabi. Got to give a big shout out also to ITP Media and Ahmed Bashur for putting this together and putting it and making uh, these last minute changes after the sandstorm here. Here comes Delphine, big right hand down the pipe. And Makhadev is just answering for everything Delphine is throwing. And Ham Makhadev is throwing back and answering. And here comes Delphine, turning Makhadev, putting her on the ropes. Switching to that no southpaw hold. stance. They have just not stopped for the whole 10 rounds. No hold. Talk stop, about stop. conditioning, Chris. Unbelievable. Talk about conditioning. Ooh, looking for that home run shot. Looking for that. 
that home run shot. We are down to the last 10 seconds. Chris and Sadi, what a fight we've seen here between Inhal Makhanid and Delphi Pursuit. And they're going to finish it. Oh, what a fight. What a fight. Wow. Wow. We are sporting the crowd in a little everybody, The fans are on their feet clapping. There's no loser here. some interviews with our fighters. Wow, it's close. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I believe Delphine picked up the pace in the middle round and was able to pick up a close, a close victory. I was very impressed uh, by Ilham as well. She, she, She's kind of slick with her punches and her movement. But at the end of the day, I think the differentiator was the experience of Delphine. This is her 50th fight. And now, we'll wait for the scorecard from the judges to know who is the winner of this fight. That's it. And then we will move to the co-main event, the legendary UFC champion Anderson, the Spider, the spider Silva, who will fight Abu Dhabi's uh, Bruno Mercado. And then after that, we will go to the main event with the TBE Floyd Money Mayweather, who's fighting the undefeated Don Moore with a record of 18 wins, 12 by knockout, no losses. And there we have Sarah in the ring. Sarah Fina, who put this fight together. She did a wonderful job. She is in the ring presenting these two ladies with the WBC silver title. And let me tell you who else needs to have accolades. As you see Jose right there, he's the gentleman in the blue, in the blue uh, suit. Jose has done a phenomenal job. He runs the Dubai Commission, the Athletic Commission. The and it's the Middle East Professional Boxing Committee. It has, and it has grown. It started in Dubai, and it has now spread to the entire Middle East. He's responsible, really, for putting together so many great events. Let's set it up to Ralph for the official decision. Before I read the scorecards, another round of applause for both warriors in this championship bout. After 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Kerry Kotanowski scored the contest 97 to 94. Judge Mike Hale, 97 to 93. And Judge Shazaz Janab scored the contest 96 94 for your winner by unanimous decision. From West Pander in Belgium, Delphine Pursuit. And the nod goes to Delphine. Mechanic actually anticipating and in her heart believed she won the fight. You could see disappointment on her face. Yeah, yeah sometimes boxers and fighters, they don't, they, they, they don't know what's going on. They feel like they have done enough to win the fight, but the judges would have a different uh, view of the fight. Absolutely. And there you have Kian Ennis from front Here row. Here is Double Dubby makes some noise! Great fight. There was not a loser here. There's Kian Ennis from Front Row Promotions uh, who put, helped put the, uh, who, was the promoter Bill putting this put on. Let's send it up to Chris Fade who was with our winner Delphine Pursuin. Delphine! Congratulations! What an unbelievable fight! Well done! How does it feel? Very nice, very nice. Thank you, Keen. After all the troubles you had, after all the difficult things you have to do, that you still organize this. You're amazing. And the other people of your team also to do this in this sense. Very, very, very thank you, Keen, for giving me this opportunity. Also, thank you, Elena Melkalet. Very nice performance, a lot of respect for you um, and for the public and the sponsors. You are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Delphine, you've had such a remarkable career and you're still going. How does it feel? Did you come here knowing that you were going to have
of a 10 round battle? Um, I think it, because it was a lot of, how they say, trolling in West Flams. To go up, go back, go up. A lot of stress with my job and everything to organize. And I feel a little bit before that I was not so, fr um, not so, how do you say it, clear than otherwise. But still, we did it. And we go to the next one. Thank you. There it is, Abu Dhabi, your WBC champion, right there, Delphi Pearson. Well done. Delphine now improves to 47 wins with three losses. And there she is posing with her team. That's her 50th fight, and now she is the mandatory challenger for Alicia Baumgartner. There it is, your champion inside the ring right here. I'm on the other hand. Arena, Abu Dhabi, Yas Island. Just, just got her first loss. How does a fighter usually deal with their first loss? You know, that's tough. Uh, in my professional career, you know, alhamdulillah, thank God. Still I, I... to come, Anderson Silva! <laughs> I never had a loss in my professional career. I did suffer one in my amateur career. Now, you know what happened to me afterwards? I quit for six months. I said, man, I don't need this crap anymore. I had it. Uh, so it really, and, and then you come back and you really realize, you know, 